So the last stock we're going to dive into uh, deeply is Sorrento Therapeutics. So this company is a lot different than the ones we've talked about um, before. This is only founded in 2009. It has a $2.8 billion market cap. So it's a lot smaller than the giants we've um, talked about so far. It's a clinical stage biotech, meaning it does not have products on the market yet. It is focused on developing innovative treatments for cancer, pain, and COVID-19. So this company has seven COVID-19 programs in its pipeline. None of them are in phase three yet. Its programs include tests, antibody treatments, and uh, even a vaccine candidate, um, all early stage. So let's talk about Covagard. So this is its neutralizing antibody treatment. They just received clearance for phase one in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. The company is targeting a potential emergency use authorization submission as early as before the end of the year. That's a mouthful, but um, that's drug company speak for you. In preclinical studies, Covagard demonstrated 100% in vitro neutralizing effect against coronavirus. So this prevented the infection of healthy cells. Let's talk about what even was Sorrento before COVID-19 um, and, and how has this past year changed the company um, as an investment and as a business? Yeah, I mean, they were a really small company and a really early stage company working on a pain management drug called Ricinid they're a toxin. Um, and then they also have a, a cell therapy, um, which is called dimeric antigen receptor uh, T cells. So, you know, you know, you know about CAR Ts, which are chimeric um, antigen receptor T cells. So it's, it's basically, it's a play off of, of CAR T. Um, and they were developing that for cancers, um, just like uh, CAR Ts are, are developed for cancer. Um, but they've, they've gone all in on, on, on coronavirus. Um, and it, it, it's, I mean, it's great to see, but I think that I'm a little worried about the the depth um, there. It's 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 they're, they've got a lot of programs in really early stage, and, and they don't seem to be following through on any of them um, to a great deal. Um, so that, that that's my biggest concern with this company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on the flip side of that, there seem to be a lot of repurposed drugs that companies are testing as treatments for COVID nineteen. Obviously, remdesivir with you know. Originally, that was an Ebola treatment, but we're also seeing Eli Lilly and Insight. They are testing um, Insight's rheumatoid arthritis drug, um, Olumiant, and Roche's Actamra. That's another one. What are your thoughts on this strategy of combining existing drugs for other things and testing that out to see if it helps with um, treating COVID-19? Yeah, so those are both uh, rheumatoid arthritis drugs. And the reason why they're, they're testing them is because um, part of the problem with COVID-19 patients is, it, is that their, their immune systems overreact to the virus and then they start um, killing the actual cells um, in the patient. Um, and then that, that causes the, many of the symptoms of, of COVID-19 that went in the, in the most severe patients. Um, so the the strategy has been sort of hit or miss. Um, the Eli Lilly and, and Insights drug um, combined with remdesivir looked um, much better. It looked better than, than remdesivir alone. Um, it reduced the amount of time to recovery by a day. So it went from eight days to seven days. Um, the, the Roche's drug was a complete flop. Um, it, it could have to do with the mechanism, mechanisms of action. So um, Eli Lilly and, and uh, Insight's drug is a JAK inhibitor, um, and Roche's drug is a um, IL-6 inhibitor. So JAK is inside the IL-6 um, signals to the cell, to the immune cell, um, to to be activated, and then it goes through a cascade that includes JAKs. So, but the the JAKs and JAK inhibitors might actually be working better than the IL-6 because um, there are other ILs. Those the IL stands for interleukin, and it's a signaling molecule that signals for immune cells to to um, become active. And so there's other IL, there's other interleukins. So, and they all sort of work through the JAK pathway. So it may be that the JAK inhibitors are gonna work better than the IL inhibitors uh, just because there's, they're blocking more of the, of the path, potential pathways um, that the immune, immune um, 
system can can get over overreact can cause the immune system to overreact. So is this kind of the cytokine storm that doctors have noticed in certain patients? Is that what all of these elements play into the overreaction of, of the inflammatory yeah. reaction? Yeah. So in, interleukins are cytokines. And so the, the cytokine storm, um, which, well, which uh, uh, investors may know it also from CAR T's. So CAR T's have this cytokine storm um, where you're, you're convincing the immune system to to attack the tumor, but then it gets you know ramped up, and then it starts attacking everything, um, and so that that exactly this is, that's a cytokine storm.